Don Fanning with another one of God's commandments in the New Testament to guide our lives into his will. A lot of confusion today about where sin comes from and how I can pass the guilt off to someone else. But the scriptures give us another look that we need to consider. In James chapter 1 and verses 14 to 16, But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be led astray, my dear brothers and sisters. Self-deception for being led astray starts in the heart and mind. The word desire is a neutral word that is translated as lusts or longing or craving for something. It's neutral because a good object or a sin could be equally desired. When sinful benefits and pleasures are allowed to become enticing and are not counterbalanced with any thought of consequences or disobedience, we can easily be led astray, even the Christian. To enhance the enticement, the mind engages in pleasurable or viral visualization of sinful activity. Perhaps you have not seriously thought about taking such a sinful action, but already the enticing desires have become more pleasurable than your own reality. And God is seen as an obstacle to your enjoyment in life. Apathy begins. Disinterest in the things of God. After all, it seems private, harmless, and secret. Nobody else knows about it. It's not going to hurt anybody, we tell ourselves. But there are two symptoms of this phase of self-deception, and we need to look at them. First, it's a growing discontent with any present situation, possessions, or relationships. Along with this growing unhappiness begins the thought that one deserves better. I certainly deserve a lot better than I'm getting, we tell ourselves. Mutual satisfaction decreases in any relationship. Arguments begin to abound, and dislike grows. The second phase is the attraction, like the expression, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. One begins to formulate what-if plans. What if I were to do such and such? Then a third phase is the formulation of a plan to really get away with fulfilling one's desires at least occasionally, or maybe even just once. By the time an opportunity to be unfaithful or disloyal actually arises, the person has already deceived himself into believing that this sinful action is really essential to my happiness in life, and that God's way cannot provide anything comparable to this satisfaction. In fact, the person might even blame God for his present dissatisfaction or his present problems. The self-deceived person feels now that he, he has to do it his way. As this process continues, the fourth phase is inevitable, regardless of the consequences, the warnings, or the hurts to others. Selfish desires bring forth a violation of God's commands and horrible consequences and no one can escape them. Sin is never fulfilling. Tempting thoughts will always come, but we are not forced to follow them. God's way is always best and never has these negative consequences. You've got to believe that. Lord, why is it so easy for me to believe that I need stuff or pleasures at any cost, that I can only be satisfied if I secretly sin, I'm so unlike you, Lord. Teach me to despise sin and to trust your word as my guide always. Amen.